Hey guys, Natty P here. Uh, I have been wanting to share this video of an interaction I had with a student on campus uh, who approached me while I was preaching uh, several weeks ago. Um, this student is a Roman Catholic and I went a certain direction uh, with this interaction and I wanted to give you some insight uh, as to why I went this direction. So uh, Roman Catholic theology has a doctrine called presumption. Now presumption uh, is a sin and according to Catholic Encyclopedia the definition of presumption is this. Presumption is here considered as a vice opposed to the theological virtue of hope. It may also be regarded as a product of pride. It may be defined as the condition of a soul which because of badly regulated reliance on God's mercy and power, hopes for salvation without doing anything to deserve it, or for pardon of his sins without repenting of them. Now, for starters, um, the part of the definition that should give us most trouble is that someone would hope for salvation without doing anything to deserve it. Now, this should uh, set off radar bells because Christian theology, uh, based on Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, says that it is by grace we are saved through faith, and that faith is not of ourselves, and it's not, a, not as a result of works so that no one would boast. So the idea that we would do anything to deserve the grace of God in salvation um, is 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 uh, directly opposed to to the Bible and to Christian theology. There is nothing that we could do to deserve our salvation. And so, in Roman Catholic Catholic uh, theology, one of the ways that you commit uh, the sin of presumption is a person might look to have his sins forgiven without adequate penance, uh, without having done adequate penance. And so, so basically this boils down to a lack of assurance because really there is no guarantee that I have done enough penance to pay for my sins. And of course this would be in related to the doctrine of purgatory which uh, also not in the Bible. But in this interaction that doesn't come up. Um, I simply use my knowledge uh, of the existence of the sin of presumption to infer that the that the boy I'm talking to doesn't have any serious assurance that he would stand justified before God. And so that is why I go in the direction that I do. And I hope this video is an encouragement and a blessing to you and perhaps uh, useful to you in your interactions with uh, people of the Roman Catholic persuasion. Because we're enslaved to our sin because we're deceived by our sin. And so we suppress the truth of God's existence. And we come up with all sorts of convoluted theories, all sorts of ways that we can deny the truth of God and deny His love and majesty and justice and power because we love our deeds. We love our evil deeds. We are born in a pitiful state, at war with God. And this is a bad situation to be in. But there is good news. There is good news that by the man Christ Jesus who daily stands to make intercession for ruined sinners, who bled and died, who lived the death that we should have lived and died the death that we should have died, we could be made righteous and stand justly before God, not condemned any longer. This is good news. This is good news. Do you have a question? You just want to Oh, thank you. My name is Nathaniel. I'm Alec. Alec? E-L-E-K. Alec? Yeah. Nice. All right, thank Alec. Thank you. What, what religion are you? Or what Catholic. denomination? Christian. Catholic? Yeah. Do you believe, uh, how, wh why should you get into heaven when you go die? Because I 
there's no definite answer for me on that, but you know, what I usually do is just try to get the most out of every single day and you know, just hope for the best because there have been some ups and downs yeah. in my life. And the only thing I can really do is just make the best of it. Okay, I like I can the Bible gives us more insur assurance than the Pope can give us. And and since about fifteen thirty three Rome's solidified its its false gospel. Um, in Matthew 7, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me on that day, Lord, Lord, will enter, enter the kingdom of God, but only he who does the will of my Father. And then uh, it says a bunch of people, I call them Lord, Lord, sayers. They say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied, preached in your name? Have we not cast out demons and done many miracles? And Jesus says, I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. He didn't say, I've forgotten your name. He says, I never knew you. They thought they were doing the Lord's work and doing the best they could. And so, so what does that mean for us? Um, does that mean we can't have any hope? No, Jesus says those who do the will of his Father. The will of the Father is that we believe God, believe his promises, believe what he said, believe in Jesus Christ, believe that he is who he said he is, that he did what he said he came to do, that he died the life that that we should have, or he died the death that we should have died and lived the life that we should have lived. And by faith alone, not by not by penance, not by prayer, not by fasting, by faith alone, for we maintain in Romans 3.28 that a man is justified, justified, made right with God by works, or by faith, not by works, faith alone. Does that mean your faith will be alone? No, because as we know, a dead faith has no works, but a living faith has works. And so our, we will have works, but they don't get us into heaven. And so we can have true assurance that nothing in, in hell or heaven or all of creation, that includes us because we're in creation, can separate us from the love of God. So we can have true and lasting assurance that if we are God's, that his, he will give us his spirit because he delights to give good gifts to his children and he will give the Holy Spirit to anyone who asks him. And we can have that witness of the Holy Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So check out this track. This is a ministry with, um, with Alec. Because that's the difference between the gospel I preach and the gospel that the Pope, and maybe even you've heard it at Catholic Mass, is that it's free, and then you live out of gratitude. And you can have assurance. You don't, it's not being presumptive to say, I know I'm going to heaven. I know I don't have to go to purgatory. And we can have the purgatory discussion some other day, but right now we're talking about assurance of salvation. You can have assurance. You can know for certain that when you stand before God, you can say, I plead nothing in my hands I bring, simply to the cross I cling. Jesus promised if I loved and trusted him, then I, I would be let in. He promised, and I believed him. And he'll say, come in, come in my child, beloved of my father, for the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. It makes sense, Alec? Mm -hmm. All right, check it out. My name's Nathaniel. I'll be here all day. I gotta get back to preaching. You probably gotta get to class. What are you, what are you studying? Computer information systems. All right, do, be good, all right? Do, do well.